welcome, welcome to, to Through the, the Halls, Halls Network. Network. My name is Adara Fierce. And I'm Tess Vonderwell. We're going to be flying through the halls today to update you on what's been happening in the nest. To start us off on this episode, we're going to be talking about our school's various clubs and organizations that your child can be involved in. With us today, we have special faculty guest and club advisor, Mrs. Huntingford. Let's get right into it. Our stats show that 76% of students are involved in three or more school organizations, with groups such as Mission Society who go on their annual trip to Appalachia, FBLA who attend business conferences, or FTA who tutors grade school students. There are various opportunities for you to be involved in the Blue Jay Nest. Today we have our reporter, Chloe Atscorn, who is with our youth group, liturgy team, and junior optimist, adult advisor, Mrs. Huntingford. Take it away, Chloe. Mrs. Huntingford, can you talk about what different clubs you lead and what they have accomplished? Sure. Uh, I'm in charge of three different clubs here at Delphi St. John's. One is our liturgy team, the second is junior optimist, and the third is youth group. And it's really kind of fun because they're all very different. Liturgy team, their responsibilities are doing things at church, whether it be putting up numbers, passing out flyers, uh, helping with maybe a penance service or Stations of the Cross. And then also um, our students that are in the liturgy team have the opportunity to do um, PA prayers, whether it be in the morning or the afternoon. So uh, the whole purpose of liturgy team is to get kids more involved uh, in our liturgy not only here at school, but also on Sunday liturgies too. Junior Optimists, we help the optimist here mm -hmm. in Delphus um, through a variety of projects. And it's kind of fun because there's a little something for everybody, whether it be the summertime is the uh, fishing derby. So if you like fish, you get to measure fish. Uh, we do help with their pancake breakfast during canal days. Uh, Easter time, we stuff Easter eggs for the big Easter egg hunt. Christmas time, uh, we've helped um, Santa visitation, uh, packing uh, Santa's bags for the delivery for on Christmas Eve. And another uh, opportunity we do with the um, Junior Optimist is Salvation Army. Uh, we get to be bell ringers for a day at the, uh, at the mall in Lima. And so, um, again, helping out our community. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the big things with Junior Optimist. And then youth group is just fun. Uh, <laughs> that's all run by students. And it's just a variety of different activities. And the part I like about youth group is the fact that you don't need to come to every activity. Mm -hmm. And it's just whatever interests you. And we do everything. In the fall, we do a hayride and paint pumpkins. Um, the biggest event is um, the lock-in. And so we stay up all night and play zombie tag at 3.30 <laughs> in the morning. But it's all good. It's all good. And uh, uh, bowling, skating, movies. And so it's just an opportunity for kids to come and do some fun activities um, with classmates, as well as sometimes um, there are kids from either from other schools that come and even mm -hmm. that even aren't Catholic. And um, I like that fact that we can we can share what we're all about with other people. How has each respective club made an impact on our school as a whole? Again, I think that you know. When you're involved in an organization, and Chloe, I know you are involved in organizations, I think it teaches you a lot, and it also builds up the school. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you, you students are the ones that really are the life and breath of our school, and so it's important for you to be involved, to take, take charge of things and not just leave it up to the adults to do mm -hmm. it. How does that Catholic faith impact our extracurricular activities? That's what I truly love about St. John's. It's not just academics. That's, you know, yes, that is why we're here, but we really are here about our faith. And our faith is integral part of who we are. And so we wanna make sure that, sure, you get a great education, but we wanna make sure that you are a well-rounded individual and, um, and how, your faith plugs into that because that's something you're going to carry with you forever. And so we want to make sure that you have um, that good basis, that good foundation, because we want you to go on and be a good citizen, again, in whatever town that you may live in, and let that Catholic faith grow um, so that you can be the best mm -hmm. person you can be. Switching gears to service hours, Mrs. Huntingford, can you tell us about the service hour program and what is expected of our students? Yeah, we have here at St. John's, we've implemented a service hour program. And again, I think it's a great way for kids to maybe um, go out of their comfort zone a little bit and to help 
uh, other people. So it's, it's tiered. So as freshmen, they need to get 10 service hours during the school year. Um, sophomores, it's 15 hours. Juniors, 20. And seniors, 25. And that needs to be done during the school year. Um, and whether it be uh, mowing a lawn for their neighbor or helping at a soup kitchen or tutoring a student, uh, helping at church, serving, um, being a cantor at church, you know, whatever it is, uh, that's how students can gain service hours. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the minimum requirement. Uh, we do have then give students an opportunity to get service cords and they'll wear those at graduation. And so if a student is interested in service cords, throughout their high school career they need to gain another 80 hours but the beauty of that is that can be done during the summer so if it's something that they participate uh, in during the summer they can uh, get those service mm -hmm. hours there because you know not everybody is in national honor society not everybody is an athlete but you know what everybody can help someone out mm -hmm. and again I think that's what we're called to do um, being as good good Catholics we're called to to help others and this is just a beautiful way to do it thank you Chloe up next we have our DSJ fun fact of the week told to us by Olivia Hines what's that fun fact today Olivia did you know that 52 points is the most points scored by a player in one game at Delphi St. John's this record is held by Steve Jenninghoff in 1989 Signing out, Olivia, who puts the fun in fun facts. Well, well, the more you know. Right, Adara? That's right. Thank you all for listening, and be sure to stay tuned for our next episode. Also, make sure you tell your friends and family about our channel. Our info will be posted on the St. John's website. Don't forget to hit the button and subscribe to Through the Halls Network. Until, Until then, then, see you next, next time. <laughs> this is how you put it off. So when we're done with this, can you write us excuses for our next one? Okay. I would giggle. Yo, lay hee hoo.